At the end of the day, I'm doing what feels right for me and chasing down my dream. I've been a goalie for over 15 years now. Like when I was 10 years old, I became a goaltender. And ever since then, I've been picking up on little tricks and hacks for how to save money when you're flying across the country, how to strap your pads more efficiently, how to break in your glove, how to puck handle more efficient. A lot of tricks that I think can help a lot of people. This video's got a little bit of something for everybody out there that I think every goalie must know for hacks and tricks. Let's begin. These are the most asked questions I get by far is how do I travel with gear? It's the most intimidating part when you're flying for the first time, you think in your mind it's gonna cost you like 300 bucks to go from Winnipeg to Calgary with gear. But if you follow these tips that I'm about to tell you, you'll be golden. First off, show up with everything in your bag, zipped up, ready to go to the airport. If you look at the handles on the tops of my bag, I tape these up because the baggage guys chuck luggage around like it's going out of style. Being quite honest, they're probably being paid minimum wage, so they really don't care about your gear. So if you tape the handles of your bags, it'll stop them from having the ability to rip the handles off and they'll stick together. Next up is make sure your gear is under 50 pounds. In Canada, a 50 pound check bag is 30 bucks. If it's overweight, it could be up to $80. The most I've been able to get away with is about 53 pounds. Anything after that, they're gonna end up charging on overweight bags. Now, the next part is kind of tricky, but I'm gonna explain, so hear me out. So all airlines have heavy duty plastic bags. You can get them for free. I always show up with my sticks, taped together, ready to go, and I ask them for a bag, and they fit over my sticks no problem. I ask for one for my pads as well. They usually need about one to two bags, depending on the size of the bags they have, but they put them in the bag, and then you're golden. The reason I do this is because sport equipment is classified as one piece of baggage, and if you put everything in two bags, well, they're gonna charge you for two bags. I usually pull the, you can't fit pads in a bag line, and they check everything as one piece with three separate baggage tags. So you only get charged for one bag, which should be 30 bucks if you're flying in Canada. Around 80 if you're flying international. If they try to charge you for two or three bags, just pay for the bags, don't make a big stink, take the receipt, and call the baggage department after your flight's done and complain. You know, I'll be honest, I sound like a Karen here, but if you call the 1-800 number, the baggage line, and you tell them about this, they will reimburse you. I've been to almost every province in Canada, I've been to half the states, and anytime this has happened, I've never had an issue getting reimbursed, and that way I'm only charged for the one bag. So do as I'm telling you here, and this will not be an issue. After that, just drop your gear off at the oversized baggage and you're good. International baggage is about the same. Like I said, about 80 bucks if you're going international, instead of 30 if it's within North America. So hack number two is getting down for low blocker shots. I personally had a problem for a while with getting down on low blocker shots. I noticed that Sergei Borovsky shaves the stick heavily, like a lot of the stick he shaved off. And I saw this in person last year when I went to a Panthers game, but I didn't really understand why he was doing it. But when I started choking up on the paddle of my stick, it started to all make sense to me. I choked up because I felt the natural shape of the paddle wasn't allowing my hand to get down to those low blocker shots as easily as when I choke up. And basically it hindered my ability to get down on low blocker save shots. So I shaved down the sides of the paddle. I used a saw, uh, I believe it's called a Dremel as well. Both were great. And ever since I shaved it down, I absolutely love it. The majority of sticks nowadays are solid throughout the core of the paddle. Although it does void the warranty, but I think it's worth it if you end up shaving down the paddle of your stick. If you decide that you do want to shave the paddle of your stick and you're unsure, you can always send me a message on Instagram at Trev Oilers and I'll always be happy to help you. And by the way, this does work on all sticks, wood, foam core, composite. So hack number three is a glove hack. And I learned this from Pasco Volana when you're in the RVH. Look at what we've done. You have no access to the puck. You're going to bring your hand out and put it down and you're going to put your stick on the outside of your pinky. That's what your glove is designed to do. That way you can block it. Or if I screw up, now you've got your glove and you've got your stick to hopefully send the puck back this direction. If you're a younger goalie, you may not have the mechanics to fully incorporate into this position. So maybe talk to your goalie coach for the basics before trying to incorporate this more advanced stuff. But basically, if you're one of the older guys, you would know that Tukaras does this a lot on the post. He tilts his arm basically backwards to use the glove's T-bar as a trap so that when players try to bank the puck off your pad and generate a rebound, you combine this with your stick flat on the ice beside it, and now you can intercept passes, cradle them, and anything coming off your pads doesn't actually give off a rebound, which is really, really helpful. Again, full credit to Pasco Volana. If you wanna learn more about that, I got lots of videos talking about technical aspects with him also on the channel. Next up is hack number four. Now this one is more time relevant nowadays because most of the rinks in Canada only let you in 15 minutes before an ice time. And if you're pressed for time, you're driving from work, you have a long car ride before you're actually getting there, before you're 15 minutes before they let you in the ice, you're gonna be feeling really stiff. And here's a couple things that can help. Get yourself a lacrosse ball and roll the bottom of your foot. I thought this was kind of crazy when I first saw this, but if you roll the bottom of your foot, it feels really awesome, releases the stress of the other muscles. Keep in mind, roll the outside and the inside. Also, if you've got a little bit more time, get that ball in your TFL. It's that rock hard muscle on the side of your hip. If you don't know what that muscle is, get the lacrosse ball in there, kind of move it around, and you'll know you're there when you're there. Trust me. You can also do your groin as well, and I think that will make a huge difference in how you physically feel 
considering the circumstances of being rushed and not having a lot of time to get into the ring. This next hack is kind of a five hacks mixed into one, but we're just gonna call it one for time's sake. It's actually strapping in a few different ways. First off, for pad strapping, if you wear your pads super tight to your leg, you lose rotation and potentially seal as well because the straps are so tight that they don't allow you to actually move with the pad. If you strap them super loose, you get that rotation, no problem, but the seal isn't great on the thigh rise because the pad can tilt over. What I've done is somewhere in between, and I picked this up from Berto Luongo and Cristobal UA, like we're talking 10 years ago. Now I take a lot of heat in the goalie community for this as being not knowing how to properly wear my pads, but I strap the pad super tight in the calf area so I get a really good feel and control of the pad, but then basically from the calf up, the whole knee and thigh area, I have no straps and I leave it super loose. It's basically put me in a position where I'm on top of pucks and I'm on top of the play and on top of my body weight and I feel very, very comfortable with it. The next strapping hack I have is a dangler hack. If you're like me, you hate wearing a neck guard and the dangler isn't that really great of an option because it clangs around. So with the dangler, you're gonna lace it up a little bit tighter, closer towards the cage. You're also gonna lace it attached to the cage and I find that when you lace it a lot shorter, it doesn't have as much room to clang around. And if you hike your chest protector up just a touch, just a little bit tighter to your actual shoulder blades, it'll help stay in place. Things don't move around as much, doesn't clang around. Really great hack, Simeon Varlamov does this, and I found this has been game changing for keeping my head mobility, my shoulder mobility, but also not eating all you can eat pucks off the collarbone all day. And the final strapping hack that I have for you is the actual the toe tie attachment. That's what basically connects your skate to your pad. A lot of people use skate laces because it's traditional, it comes with the pad, but I personally recommend a bungee toe tie. Like there's lots of brands, you can use whatever brand you want, but I like toe ties because the stretch of the core allows it to take away and add stress throughout the lace when need be. And what I basically mean by that is when you're in your stance, your pad will sit taller because it's being pulled towards your skate for the bungee. When you're on your knees, specifically when you're going post to post in an RVH, the bungee will give and allow for a lot more slack so that it doesn't have the strain going into your hips, knees and ankles. I switched over four years ago from skate laces to toe ties. I've used every brand on the market and I can't recommend using a toe tie enough. I personally love my own pro laces, the Travis Peck pro laces, they're built for bigger guys. If you have bigger skates, if you're a heavier guy, which a lot of the other brands don't really think about when they design these products. If you want some toe ties that accommodate that, I got a link in the video description and a $5 promo code if you use the code TRAVSUCKS when you check out. The final hack I have for you today is stick handling. Now, I may not stop many pucks, but I like to think that I'm a pretty good puck handler and a lot of that comes from confidence and practicing. You literally, you will not get better unless you practice. When I was 14 years old, I would take 500 pucks in my backyard during the intermission for Hockey Night in Canada and I'd shoot 500 pucks at a net. I know, too bad I didn't spend that time stopping pucks because it really could have helped, but point being is that my passing and my shooting abilities really improved. The blocker has the control, but the glove brings the power and the consistency. You're gonna grip with the glove towards the bottom of the glove. No, this is critical because the glove is putting all that mustard behind the puck. Also, try putting some force into that puck when you're making that pass to so get a little bit of power. Nothing worse than a duck. There's nothing worse than passing ducks up the ice to get picked off and come back the other way. I personally always go overhand because it gives you the most power and control, but if you're going for a long bomb and you're shooting the puck off the glass high and hard, those are really, really great. If you don't need a big pass, go underhand. That'll be my personal recommendation. Make sure you're practicing getting it on the ice, hard, on the player's tape. Guys love it when you give them a nice crispy on the tape. Finally, saucing. If you want to sauce the puck when you're in the weeds, it's great to get rid of it and just chip it off the glass so that way nobody's taking the puck away from you. Like I said, I go underhand, and when I'm going underhand, I'm scooping the puck up and out, almost like you're tossing a football, if that kind of makes sense. This may not be a hack that you can necessarily do today, but it will be game changing to your puck handling if you keep practicing on it. It doesn't come overnight, it'll come with time, and if you stick with it, I promise you'll get better. I don't know if you necessarily want to call this a hack, but I tape one third of the blade of my stick, and I find that when I'm doing that, the momentum of having no tape on the first two thirds of my blade generates momentum with the puck. So when I'm shooting it, it's coming across my blade, and then when it finally meets that one third of the toe that's taped, it grips in and I get a lot of power behind that. First thing what I have found has worked, the little strip across the middle of the blade doesn't really do anything, it's more for style. And I get people commenting about the fact that I'm trying to be Tim Stoopsla, although I'm not. When you're taping your stick, sometimes it can be very inconsistent. I personally been using butt ends for over four years now, actually almost five years. I love it when it comes to puck handling, it puts control on my blocker hand on that top hand with the top grip. And the best part about butt ends is that you're not having to redo your tape every week. You don't get greasy, it doesn't get slimy, it doesn't get gross. They're reusable, so if you break your stick, you can reapply them. And again, just at the pro laces, there's a link down in the video description and the promo code TRAVSUCKS will save you a couple bucks on your order. Now, the final one I have for you isn't necessarily a hack, but more so a bonus tip and how to get a great jersey tuck. Now, I think a good jersey tuck is critical if you want to have good style. Well, Trav, who does a jersey tuck anymore? Well, only Wayne Gretzky, Alex Ovechkin, good friend of the show, Jonas Senroth, John Gibson. Need I go on? These guys had mad style. And there isn't really a trick to it, but 
If you have a set of pants with an internal belt and no suspenders, it goes a long way in helping. Also, having bigger size pants, having a bigger size chest protector so there's a little bit of space for the jersey to go into the back is really helpful. Now, although this is a hack for better style, if you can't stop a beach ball like me, you might as well try to look good while you're doing it. If you have a goalie hack that's really awesome that you think I should know about, leave it in the comment section below and maybe I'll get to it in the next episode. Also, I do need to thank NordVPN for being today's video sponsor. As you can see right now, I'm very well protected. I'm very comfortable. I'm sitting pretty here. Everything's all tickety-boo. Problem is, you're not. Every time you go on the internet, your personal information can be exposed, people are taking your identity. As the playoffs conclude, we start looking towards the next season, hopefully an on-time NHL start. Don't spend 300 bucks and give the NHL your money. Watch the games for free from a live streaming service. They're free, you got great options, and you can use these streaming services without them taking your personal information. You end up on some Russian scammer list that's calling you asking if you wanna buy a truck from Siberia. No, Bob, I don't wanna buy a truck. You want to buy NordVPN so you don't have to deal with that phone call. And again, 73% off with the promo code trav for oilers when you go to nordvpn.com slash trav for oilers I want to thank Nord for sponsoring this video, and I really hope you enjoyed these hacks. I will see you on the next upload. New videos every Monday and Thursday from here on out. See you then.